Okay, boys and girls, we got the fender off. When you take these fenders off, or for those of you that's never taken your fender off before, there's two bolts on each side. Then for your belt guard, there's a uh, there's a screw that has to come out. And uh, that bracket down there, I take the bracket out. And then your electrics have this quick disconnect there. That's got to come off. So I also removed the side pieces of billet aluminum that hold the, uh, the turn signals. And the, uh, they're also stoplights too. They are over here. And while we got them off, we're going to look for scratches, and uh, I'm going to try to I'm going to try to repolish these guys here. We got uh, a sandpaper kit. I got another one of these little kits here from a Dremel that have all these, but we're going to need this on the fender. So. Uh, here, let me show you guys. The, there's actually a lot of nicks in that, guys. I didn't, I didn't know until I started going over it. Then let me explain to you what I'm going to do. Okay. There's a lot of areas we're going to go over. I'm, I'm repainting the entire fender. See, it's like this little. I've already sanded it a little bit. We have to sand it more. This we have to fill in. Um. This we're going to sand down a little bit more. There's a couple scratches back here. You know. So what we're going to do is all these. See, it's like, look at all these little nicks here. There's, there's a lot of little nicks on this guy here. That I didn't know until I, I started going over it, guys. So we're going to fill all these in. And, uh. I think I could use my glazing, my glazing putty. Let me see if I have it over here. I'll show you guys. Here it is. What I do is I heat this up a little bit with my heat gun. You know, especially since it's winter right now, I'll heat that up a little bit. And that's perfect for doing stuff like this, like this, all these little nicks, you know. I put it on with like a, a piece of cardboard or a piece of plastic and then I'll sand it down. But what we're going to do is this has to be sanded down a lot better. I'm going to sand this down with uh, I think I'm going to use 800 to sand this down with. Then we're going to fill these in. We'll sand them down. Then we're going to prime it. Sand the primer down. And I don't know yet if I want to paint this silver or another color, guys. That's the position I'm in right now. Part of me wants to hit it with a silver, and part of me just wants to paint it, possibly a blue, and then throw the flames over the blue. Today's a, uh, well, tomorrow is a very special day for us here. Spe it's special, not, not in a good or bad way. It's, um, Tomorrow to be one year from my max. For my uh, Alaskan Husky died on the 28th of last year, and uh, I was really I was really attached to this to Max. I don't even want to call him a dog, guys, because you know to me he was like a brother. <clears throat> and. Um, what had happened, the reason why I got so attached to him was he was my first big male dog. And he looked just like Rin Tin Tin. He was like a he, he was very, very, very loyal to me. I don't think I'll ever have another dog that's loyal like that ever again. Wherever I'd go, he was right beside me. Spirit's probably right beside me right now. You know, and uh, I'm not going to go into all the 
things that happened like a, a week or two after he died. I think I told you guys before that I swear he was right beside my bed. I heard him. I knew he was. That's when that night I lit the candle in the living room in front of his urn and uh, I forgot that I mixed the candle wax with uh, alcohol. And I came down here to work on a bike and the TV console got on fire and that's I, I had to redo my living room ceiling. But I want to talk about him a little bit because he deserves this kind of notoriety in my book. You know, um, I basically, what I did was I put, I got too attached to him. I never thought I'd lose him. I, mean, I never thought he would die. You know, and, you know, you say to yourself, well, how can you possibly think that? about any living creature you know guys and what we do is we fool ourselves we psych ourselves you know and I liked him and I loved him so much I just refused to believe that he was that he would die and even when I see, seen that he was getting older I refused to believe that uh, it was age sitting in you know and I figured well you know what I actually thought that I could turn that around by taking them out more and feeding them healthier food But uh, I think he had, um, I, I'm pretty sure he had a tumor that was growing inside. As a matter of fact, he had the tumor that was growing inside his, his, um, his brain for a while. Possibly, possibly a good, probably ever since 2016, maybe even 2015, he had the tumor growing and the vets missed it. The vets misdiagnosed it. I mean, there's not much you can do anyway. You know, what they would have got him on meds and they would have, he would have been doped up all the time. But, uh, you know, these vets guys, they don't know everything. Okay, that's what I want to tell you guys. These vets, these veterinarians, they don't know everything. They miss a lot of times. Okay? And I believe they missed. They, they misdiagnosed him. Now, it's partly my fault, too, because I, we had a blood sample taken from him when this all started, when the symptoms started. You know, like a little bit of blood with the mucus was coming out of his nose. It happened quite a few times. And I took him down, and the vet told me. They, they, they looked in his blood under the microscope, and they told me, I don't like what I see. Um... Would you want to have a biopsy done and it'll only cost another 150 bucks? And back then money was real tight. I didn't have it. And I said no. Uh, now even if I would have had the biopsy done, um, I yet have found out that he has you know, brain, brain cancer, which is a tumor. And there's basically nothing you can do. They'll say, well, when, once he starts getting to the point where it's going to start being painful, we'll give you trazodone for him, you know. That's usually what they prescribe. Man, my nose is, is leaking. So anyway, like I said, um, I think they misdiagnosed him, man. But, man, I miss him. Something terrible, guys. And that, that's what I'm going to also make. A, I have to make another video. I made a steel video of him. I have many many videos of him I'm going to try to put them together so yeah anyway uh, I took the I took the rear fender off I wasn't going to take the turn signal struts off and then I thought to myself you know what this has to be done right it's going to be easier to have them off and to sand this fender down so I took them off And uh, they were pretty. They were pretty easy. To, they weren't hard at all to get off. You know, there's like four bolts, four bolts in there. You take them off. You take the wiring harness out, and that's that. So I thought of painting the body black. Have a have a black body and a silver frame. I think I showed you guys that red. That red's actually pretty nice. Red and silver go. Or blue. Like a nice blue 
and I'm still I'm, I I part part of me wants to have a picture of him somewhere on the motorcycle. Somewhere I'm going to put a picture of my Max somewhere on the bike. But uh, I think I'm. I want to go with flames on it. If I if I shoot this with a blue, the flames going to be silver. Okay, that'll work as long as there's silver somewhere on it. The silver will go with the silver frame. You know. So if I paint the fenders in a tank blue, a nice blue, maybe like a like a like a cobalt blue or a jeep blue. I think you guys have seen the, these Jeeps. That are real nice. It's a real nice blue color. Real nice. Real nice. And uh, then put silver flames on it. But uh, we're going to do the rear fender first. And uh, I'll take it from there. So I just want to show you guys where I am on this and what's going on. And uh, this this bike probably won't go out until maybe the middle of May or the, the end of May next year. That's how long the winters are here, guys. Uh, and by the way, my um, my dry fire laser should come in this week. Okay, and we're going to start practicing together on that. I'll make the videos, and we're going to see if we can draw it lightning fast, hitting that little bicycle reflector from 10 to 15 feet away, Then what we'll do is we'll draw it with a safety on from a concealed. Okay, because if, if you're going to draw the pistol, you're not going to have it wide open. You're going to have it concealed under like under a shirt or under a jacket. So we're going to be doing that too. <laughs> 